I don't have anything to hide. My life isn't so interesting. Why should I care if companies are collecting my data? Today, let's examine that argument and see why everyone, including you, should care about companies respecting your privacy and personal data. There are a lot of aspects of data collection you may have never thought about before, so I think you'll find this video pretty eye-opening. So with that said, let's jump right in. Let's start by looking at what information is usually collected about us on a day-to-day -day basis. Companies such as Google and Facebook monitor your activity on their own sites and on any sites on which they serve ads or which use analytics tools provided by these companies, which is probably most websites you visit. There, they can learn about your interests, your shopping history, your location via your IP address or GPS on your phone, and what kinds of ads and content you enjoy most and respond to best. And that's even if you don't have any account on these platforms. If you do have an account, they will be able to analyze even more about what you're interested in, given how you use their services. And large tech companies, as well as governments, which I'll get to in a future video, are able to use this seemingly benign data they have about you to compile a much more in-depth profile on who you are. Advertisers on Facebook, for example, can choose which demographics groups to show or not show their ads to, based on users' gender, age, location with specificity down to just a mile from any point, or you can target by congressional district, zip codes, neighborhoods, etc. Also available for targeting are demographics including your education history, including where, when, and what you studied, and what kind of degree you achieved, your occupation and your employer, your relationship status, including whether you're in a long-distance relationship, for example, your device usage, what countries you've lived in, the ages of your children, whether you or your friends recently got married, engaged, move, or have a birthday coming up, whether you're at a new job or in a new relationship, whether you're a frequent traveler or commuter, what your political leanings are, what kind of Facebook pages you are an admin of, and, only until very recently, your race and ethnicity, which Facebook called multicultural affinity though it's probably not too difficult to use the other targeting options as a workaround to continue to target those groups. Facebook also warns advertisers not to discriminate, but it has been done in the past, and clearly isn't difficult to do, to do so. But just wait, because in addition to all those things, advertisers can also target people who are and are not interested in certain things, which runs such a wide gamut that pretty much whatever you can think of is in there. For example, there are activist groups, news organizations, genres of music, movies, art, and books, foods and restaurants, businesses, online dating websites, hobbies, clothing and fashion, celebrities, political issues, travel destinations, religious groups and activities, and enough else that advertisers can pretty much target the exact people they want to see a specific ad. And, of course, advertisers can combine any of these demographics or choose to exclude certain ones to truly establish the exact audience they want to see their ads. And much of this information is not determined by you directly sharing it with the platform. Instead, they can use what they do know about you to guess these things using sophisticated machine learning algorithms. And Facebook is not the only culprit. Data brokers you've probably never even heard of have data for hundreds of millions of individuals in the US and around the world, and it is similarly robust. They come up with all of it by compiling information from government records, social media profiles, and partner businesses like retailers and news and travel websites, and many data brokers buy and sell information with each other. Now hopefully you agree with me that that's creepy. But is it actually harmful to you that companies know this information? What's the big deal if companies serve you ads for products that align better with what you're interested in? After all, advertisers themselves aren't able to look up this data for any one specific person. Well, even if companies actually store this data securely and responsibly, it can still be problematic. It allows, for example, political campaigns or even foreign governments trying to influence political campaigns to target advertisements to particularly vulnerable groups of people with messages that they might specifically resonate with. They can even offer multiple conflicting messages to different groups separately. And you may think that you personally wouldn't fall for these things, but I disagree. 
Even if you aren't swayed quite as easily as some people may be by an internet ad, I think that her hyper-targeted messages like this contributes to the echo chamber effect for everyone, where we are not exposed to people with different experiences, but are instead fed information that already aligns with what we enjoy and believe in. This applies to political ads, not just of politicians and campaigns, but also special interest groups and media outlets. But it also applies to product advertisements, where you are already being fed messaging designed to make you think a certain product or service will be helpful to you, or that a certain brand is better or higher quality. But when you mix ad targeting into this, I'd argue that subliminal messaging can take a hold of your subconscious in a much more profound way, as almost every ad you see will be something that you might already have an attachment to. And I also see a second problem that comes along with targeted advertising, which applies to everyone, and that is that by giving your data to companies, it allows their machine learning algorithms to learn more about everybody, and in a way, you are playing a role in the exploitation of the most vulnerable groups in our society. And to top it all off, the fact that big companies have websites that serve a geographically diverse audience can target ads based on location in order to squeeze out more profit puts local businesses, like newspapers, on a level playing field, which is more like a disadvantage because of the more robust resources the larger companies have, whereas before, being able to serve localized advertisements was an important leg up local businesses had on large national or multinational corporations. And all of those things are just the downsides if companies do safeguard the data they collect. If they don't properly store their data, and every company makes mistakes, whether out of ignorance, negligence, or malice, that data can get in the hands of bad actors who don't abide by any privacy policy or terms of service that you may have ignored but still did agree to. I've linked in the description two fascinating New York Times articles, where journalists were provided anonymously with a massive, and yes, anonymized, dataset from a data collection company, and the journalists were able to track individuals' whereabouts by using public records to determine where an individual's home and or work location was, which could easily be used to identify patterns that could give away the identity, the identity of almost any anonymous dot on the map. Oh yeah, and these individuals included government employees, such as military officials, congresspeople, and secret service agents, which, if the wrong person got a hold of the data, could drastically undermine national security. And it wouldn't be too far-fetched. Data breaches happen all the time, at an average of more than one per day, as a result of hacks, physical intrusion or theft, just plain carelessness, or bad actors within one of these data collection companies leaking a data set to the public. Or they could hand it over to a foreign government instead. By the way, Outside of advertising, companies that have so much data can use it to inform other marketing and strategy decisions. So by giving companies your data, you're just making them free money that you should really have rights to. They shouldn't be able to profit off of your existence. Now, you may reasonably respond, well, if they can't make money off of data collection and targeted advertisements, then I'll start having to pay for services out of pocket instead. And that brings me to my last point on companies collecting data, which is about what alternatives are available to our current data-funded online economy. One option is something like Scroll, which is a service in which users pay a monthly fee which is distributed directly to participating platforms in exchange for an ad-free experience on their websites. As of now, it does not work with a very diverse array, array of websites, but that could change, and hopefully, one day there will be one service that takes care of paying for most every website. But I acknowledge that it could easily end up being more likely, more like the array of streaming services we now have that each offered something slightly different. If you are worried about having to pay for everything online, though, services like social media platforms may start having a paid option for more features in their services if targeted advertising goes away, but they need the user base enough that the free option likely won't entirely disappear. Now Google, as a data collection and ad serving service, relies on ads for around 84% of its revenue. But the truth is, for those who display those ads as a source of income, 
Even targeted advertising doesn't fully pay the bills. It's really only a supplement. Full-time independent creators on YouTube need sponsorships, and news outlets need paying subscribers, even though they serve ads which are probably targeted most of the time. So would the internet look different with regulation to prevent the mass stale data harvesting currently taking place? Yes. But is it the end of the internet as we know it? I don't think so. It's impossible to say for sure, but I would argue that paying a few extra dollars a month is a small price to pay for the right to protect your most basic aspects of your life. And the price may not actually be so high. Vartz's Recode estimates a $35 per month fee to completely eliminate all advertising from the internet. However, if we just eliminate the more harmful tracking that allows for targeted advertising, I have estimated it would only be an average of about $22 per year per adult in the US. And you already pay quite a bit to access the internet through your ISP or phone company anyways. Of course, eliminating advertising or targeted advertising could have ripple effects that make either of those estimates irrelevant and far off, but the point is that it is within reach. Or Jeff Bezos could do us all a solid and single-handedly pay the difference necessary for everyone in the US to never see targeted advertisements for about 40 years. As for now, I suggest some simple steps to safeguard your online presence. First, if you can help it, don't use Facebook products such as Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. If you can't stomach that, then try following the steps I have linked in the description to limit tra tracking of those apps. If you have a Google account, turn off targeted advertising, location history, and other activity controls. If you have an iPhone, similar controls exist to turn off analytics and targeted advertising. Also on your phone, make sure location services and access to your microphone, photos, etc. are disabled for every app you possibly can. For browsing the internet, you should probably use a privacy-focused browser on desktop and mobile like Brave or Firefox with strict tracking protection turned on, though at the very least you should be avoiding Google Chrome at all costs. You'll be surprised at just how ubiquitous attempts at cross-site tracking are when you use a browser that limits them. You should also probably be using a search engine like DuckDuckGo if you're per particularly committed, though I'll be honest, I don't even do that. I also suggest using a cookie auto-deleter for as many sites as you can bear having to log into again each time you want to use them. Though, if you're using a password manager, that's not too big of a deal. And uBlock Origin is a great idea too. However, all that ad blocking and tracking protection will be taking some money away from creators and site owners, so you may want to consider donating to those people if you can. In all honesty, donating even just a few dollars directly to individual creators often goes significantly further than getting served ads, especially if you do so on some kind of a re recurring basis, like by watching YouTube videos with YouTube Premium. As I alluded to earlier, you should absolutely, unequivocally use a password manager in order to protect your data on multiple accounts in the event of a data breach, and turn on multi-factor authentication for as many accounts as possible, but especially any emails which you use to sign up for other accounts and via which you are likely able to reset your password for said accounts. And you could use a VPN as well, but for the average person, it probably won't make your browsing much more secure or private. I'll leave plenty of links in the description for how to do all of these things. But that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like on it, and I'll be making a follow-up video shortly about collection of data by governments, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. And please share this video if you think other people would benefit or learn from this information. Also, this video's script complete with comprehensive source citations and or additional commentary, backing up and elaborating on pretty much every sentence in the video is available in the description, so please check that out for a much deeper look at any of the content in this video. I spend a long time writing these annotated scripts in order for the videos to be of the highest factual quality and accuracy, so I appreciate you taking a look. And finally, as always, if you think I missed anything, or if you have any other comments, leave them below, or send me an email at the address listed in the description. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.